Hey, welcome back to Oil City Woodworks. Uh, this is part two of the two-part Bourbon Moth Outfeed assembly table build. In the first part, you saw me get the table to essentially the frame. Uh, it did not have the top and it did not have the drawers and the feet. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the process I went through to attach the Formica to the top, attach the MDF to the top, build the drawers and install the drawers, and put the adjustable feet on the table. And uh, yeah, that's it. So no funny skit today. Unless you like that sort of thing, I can do it in the future. I thought it was a lot of fun to do. Hopefully you thought it was funny. And again, if you haven't seen part one, go back and watch part one. There's a link down below. And if you did see part one, thank you very much. And if you saw part one and became a subscriber, thank you very much. So either way, hopefully you enjoyed part two. And if you haven't already liked and subscribed, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, here we go, part two. All right, so as I said in the last video where we left off was I had the MDF top sitting on top of the frame. I went through and I glued that seam in the middle. I did not glue the top to the frame, but I did glue it in the middle. And then I'm going to attach from underneath with pocket screws like you're seeing me do here. And you can see right here that the top pushes up a little bit as I'm trying to screw in that screw. So I enlisted the help of my daughter because I figured I don't really have a good way to clamp this and having her stand in the middle while I screw from underneath would be just perfect. And um, so that's what we did. And so I just proceeded to screw in from underneath that middle section all the way across the table. And then I made my way around the entire table screwing in from underneath. Getting in and out of this little cubby hole was a little precarious, but I made it work. So here you can see me again attaching the top from underneath, but you can also see that that is the pine board that I veneered with the birch uh, when I resawed in the last video. And so saved a little bit of money on materials, but it looks pretty nice from the outside. And then once I was finished, I had to measure in between the legs of the table so that I could cut these MDF strips. And these MDF strips are going to be mounted to the underneath of the outside lip. That way I have a good solid inch and a half clamping section all the way around the table. And at this point of the build, I did not have the miter slots uh, routed out in the tabletop, so I needed to use my miter saw to cut these strips down to size. And they're not quite to full width as well, so I took them after I cut them to length and I ripped them down on the table saw to final size so that I could glue and pin nail them to the underneath ledge all the way around the outside of the table. which is what you're seeing me do here. So all I did was glue each strip to the underneath side and I used a 16 gauge brad nailer to pin nail from underneath to the top. And of course you didn't see me add glue to the underneath side of the piece of MDF, the actual tabletop itself. And I think that in hindsight I probably should have, but I think this is gonna be okay. I've got some pin nails underneath, I've got the glue, then ultimately I'll have some white maple skirting that goes all the way around the table so that'll also hold it in place and then i'll have the formica that will run on top of that skirting which will kind of tie it all together so I'm not too worried about it and then here i took this hard white maple that i got from west vice here in southeast texas like i said that is my local hardwood dealer and they also have all kinds of other stuff like drawer slides and hinges and screws and nuts and Anyway, it's a really great store if you live in the Southeast Texas area, West Vice Hardwoods. But uh, I took the piece of maple, milled it down, because again, I'm gonna skirt the entire table with hard white maple. All right, so the next morning, I wanted to go ahead and get the adjustable feet installed on the table so that I could move it around if I wanted to. 
And what you see in this clip here is me installing the wheel too high, incorrectly. So obviously when you step down on that little lever, it's supposed to lift the table up. Clearly I've made a mistake. So I removed the wheel, I got my measurement correct. And because the slope of the garage floor is different, the wheels on the back legs are actually a little bit lower than the ones on the front. So anyway, I did off camera get all four wheels finally attached to the table and it does move around successfully. Then I switched back to the hard white maple and I pulled out my 45 miter jig here to cut a bevel on one end and then take an actual measurement off the table itself by holding it up against the table with that miter in place. And then I marked the other end and I was able to cut the corresponding miter. And then I came back over and I glued it to the table's edge. And I have this blue painter's tape here because even though I pin nailed it, I thought that I might need the painter's tape to act as an additional clamp. I sort of abandoned this idea around the other three edges because one seemed just like a waste of time and two, I didn't really feel like it was gonna be necessary because with the pin nails and the glue, and then again, the Formica top holding it all together, I didn't really feel like it was necessary. But once I got it all installed, this is what the table looks like with that hard white maple all the way around the edge of the table. And I think it turned out pretty good and it matches up with the birch plywood really, really well. So then I took this rolled up sheet of Formica that I ordered from one of the big box stores. It's actually Home Depot. Uh, this is a five foot by 12 foot sheet of black Formica laminate. And this is what I'm gonna cover the top with. And this stuff is pretty easy to work with. You can either cut it with, like you see me here doing, you can score it with a utility knife and then it breaks pretty easily. But an even better option would be to take a trim router with a flush trim bit and cut it because that actually works like a charm. Because you can see here, even though I scored it, the drop didn't quite come out very well. And I do want to save that drop because I want to use it for future projects, but it's okay, at least the tabletop piece came out okay. All right, so then I switched to contact cement, and this stuff is pretty nasty. If you've ever worked with this stuff, you know, you definitely wanna wear a respirator, try to ventilate the room that you're working in. It's pretty nasty. So M MDF is fairly porous and actually wants to soak up that contact cement a lot. So I actually end up putting two coats of contact cement on the MDF itself and one coat to the underside of the Formica and you basically let both sides dry until they're slightly tacky. And then once you put them together, they bond almost instantly. And so that's what you see here. I kind of went overboard with the scrap wood, but again, I did not want those two pieces to touch one another until I was absolutely ready for them to touch because I did not want them to bond instantly and have the sheet in the wrong place or be a little crooked and so what you see me here doing is making sure that okay i've got plenty of overhang all the way around i'm going to cover the entire tabletop no problem and then it was just a matter of taking each piece of scrap wood out and using this j roller to securely bond it to the uh, mdf underneath and i worked my way from the middle towards the outside until i was completely finished all the way around the table And then once I had the Formica completely bonded to the top, I went around all the way around the edge of the table with a flush trim bit in my trim router and just cut off the excess overhang. And then after I did this, I switched out the router bit to a chamfer bit and I made another pass all the way around the table with a chamfer bit to kind of break the edge as you see here.
And because I had all four feet installed correctly and the top was completely finished, I was able to maneuver it back into position up against the back of the table saw where it's gonna live forever. Then once it was in place, the next day I came back and I used the straight edge or the ruler out of my stare at square and this white pencil to mark the miter slots onto the tabletop or transfer the miter slots from the table saw to the tabletop so that I could route those out and have space for crosscut sleds and the miter bars that are mounted to underneath of those crosscut sleds. So even though you're gonna see this setup here for when I actually routed out the slots, this was actually later on in the build and so in the latter parts of this video you'll notice that those slots are gone that's just because i jumped ahead to show you all right so then i switched back over to the drawer slides and i took a little spacer block to make sure the reveal was correct and because the drawer slides are going to be mounted in the same position for all eight drawers i was able to take this piece of scrap plywood and i stood it up on its edge to install the top drawer slide and then i laid it down on its side to install the bottom drawer slide. And I just made my way all the way around the table to get all the drawer slides for all eight drawers installed. And then once the drawer slides were actually installed, I took real life measurements in between each slide since the drawer boxes themselves will fit inside of these drawer slides. And when I say real life, I mean, once they're installed as opposed to going off the plans and assuming I know the actual width of the drawer box. And I just find this to be much more accurate to make sure that where it's actually going to live, there is space. And I had previously ripped down all this plywood to build drawer boxes. And here I am just cutting them all to length once I confirmed the width and depth of all the drawers. And then to build my drawer boxes, I do like to run a dado in all of the pieces. So both side pieces, the front and the back. And so I installed the dado stack into the table saw and I proceeded to run a test piece through just to kind of dial in the depth of that dado as well as the width of the dado to make sure the bottom of the drawer would fit. And as you can see here, it fits nicely. And this is another place where I deviated from Jason and his plans, whereas he used quarter inch uh, plywood for the bottom of his drawers. I wanted to use half inch because some of those bigger drawers are probably going to house some pretty heavy stuff in the future. And while quarter inch plywood might be OK, I just felt like I needed to beef it up a little bit. So that's what I went with was half inch. And so here you can just see that I went ahead and cut a dado on all of the pieces for each drawer box. And then once I had the dados cut and all the pieces, I was able to put my regular blade back into the table saw. And of course I checked the brake clearance because I do have a saw stop and I don't want to have any accidental tripping of the brake, but I also want to make sure that it is going to trip when I need it to trip. So when I build drawer boxes, I like to run the drawer bottom long. So essentially I cut the dado off of the back piece and I run the bottom long so that I can screw it to the underside of the back piece once the drawer boxes are built. So in order to get that measurement, I just added this 5 8 setup block to the end of a side piece and then measured that overall distance. And that'll be the length of my drawer bottom for each drawer because all eight drawers are the same depth, different widths, which if you notice in this clip here, I'm about to make a big mistake. So what I thought I was doing was taking the back of each drawer to cut it off above that back dado. So like I said, I could run the drawer bottom long, but like an idiot, I grabbed a side piece from each drawer and I should have been tipped off to the fact that each one of these was the same length when in fact the width of each drawer is different. And the way that I built the drawers are that the back piece and the front piece of the drawer box sit inside of the side pieces. Hopefully that makes sense, but essentially, for some reason, I kind of thought this doesn't feel right. And this is the moment where I realize, no, it's not right, you idiot. You cut a side piece. So thankfully I checked it right there and I was able to make an adjustment 
And this is me putting all of the side pieces back into the stack for each drawer. And this is where labeling those pieces would have come in handy. In the first video, you saw me label all of my pieces as I cut them down from full sheets of plywood. I was lazy and I did not label front, back, and side, side for each drawer box. And that's where it almost bit me. So here I am coming back and actually grabbing a side piece from each drawer. And then I'll proceed to cut them off, like I said, at the top of the dado. And that'll make sense, I guess, here in just a minute. So then once all of that was cut, I set it to the side and I took this half inch plywood and I started to cut all of the drawer bottoms down to size. And I can't remember if I mentioned in the first video or not, but these Jessam stock guides are a lifesaver when it comes to cutting sheets of plywood because it really does help hold that sheet of plywood up against the fence because they have rollers that are turned into the fence and they keep a good solid pressure up against the fence and make it really nice to cut consistent widths with plywood. So anyway, there's my plug for the Jessam stock guides. And another plug is this AccuCut system from Craig. Again, I don't have a track saw, but this thing is really accurate and works really well. And as you can see in this clip right there at the bottom, the miter slots are not yet cut into the tabletop. So I couldn't use my crosscut sled. So I had to use that little makeshift track saw instead. All right, so here I am assembling the drawer boxes. And all I do is take the side piece and run a bead of glue in the dado, then take the front piece and run a bead of glue in the dado. And I essentially build it side by side by inserting the drawer bottom. So run another bead of glue on the other side and the front. Set that in place. And as you can see, the drawer bottom runs all the way to the very end of those side pieces because that back will sit on top of the drawer bottom flush with the end of the side pieces. And at this point, all I'm doing is adding glue and a couple of pin nails just to hold it in place. And then I end up going back and driving in screws through the sides into the front and back to hold it all together. And it doesn't really matter where you put these screws through the drawer bottom up into the back of the drawer box. But because again, I've got a little bit of a thing for symmetry. I wanted to make sure they were all marked in the right spot. So I came up with some arbitrary placement of those screws and I used this flush trim bit to pre-drill a few holes so that I could then go back and drive home a few screws. And that will make this drawer box really solid. And it also really helps to square up the drawer as well. So then I went around the sides and I marked a line, which would essentially be the middle of that side piece and then pre-drilled and countersunk a few holes so that I could drive screws in through the side of the drawers into the front and back. And that way, when you pull on the drawer, you're actually pulling perpendicular, if that makes sense to the screw. And that's just makes for a really strong drawer box. And I know there are a ton of videos on YouTube on how to build a drawer box, and there are probably much more efficient, quicker ways to build drawer boxes, but this is the way I like to build them. It's always worked for me, whether it was shop furniture or furniture in the house. So this is the method I stick with because I like it. All right, and then I took these little spacer blocks and I went around and I put those in place. And as you can see here, this drawer ends up giving me a little bit of trouble because even though I took good measurements, I made it a little too wide, but I won't show you the hour or so that I messed around with this stupid drawer, breaking it apart and rebuilding it so that it would actually fit. But I had the spacers underneath each drawer box and then I used a scrap piece to make sure that the drawer slide was flush with the front and then I screwed them all in place. And you actually have to pull the drawer box out to get to that last screw, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's really not that bad. So I pulled each drawer box out, installed that last screw, and then proceeded to put them back into their position.
And like I said a minute ago, these are supposed to be soft closed drawer slides, but because that box was a little too wide, the soft close mechanism didn't want to work. So I abandoned this drawer and I went around installing all of the other drawer boxes and ultimately went back and fixed that drawer off camera. So again, I took some spacer blocks, which were just essentially scrap pieces of plywood. And I used those just to make sure that I got the drawer box on top in the right spot. Then I was able to use these handy shims, which I found out about from Michael Alm years ago. And they did in fact come in super handy. So I just made the reveal on the bottom and the sides of each drawer front. And I drove home a few screws right through the pre-drilled holes that will ultimately have the drawer pull in them. So that's how I was able to hold the front of the drawer onto the drawer box. And then I was able to pull it out and take these cabinet screws and drive home a few of them from the back. And so between the cabinet screws from the back and then the drawer handles themselves, that drawer front ain't going anywhere. And with that, that's it. All the drawers were built, installed. I got the handles on. As you can see here, the soft close works just perfectly. And uh, yeah, this was a really fun table to build. Like I said, I deviated somewhat from Jason and his plans had and, and what he did in his video from material selection to construction methods and the number of drawers. But at the end of the day, what it proves is that yes, just because I don't have a domino joiner or I don't have a shaper origin, you can still build the same type of furniture with pocket hole screws and plywood and it looks just the same as his does in his video. So turned out really well. I'm very happy with it. And I was able to finally get some stuff in these drawers, which helps me get a little bit more organized. And this is temporary. I'm going to go back at some point in the future and make sure I get those tools, maybe in some Kaizen foam or something else. I don't know. But uh, at least I can find stuff that I'm looking for instead of having to stack and unstack Rubbermaid totes and dig through them just to find stuff. So really happy with the way this table turned out. So once again, you can get plans for this table at Bourbon Moth's website. That's where I got them from. And you can use his videos to kind of follow along. You can now use this video, hopefully to follow along as well on how to actually build a table like this for yourself. And hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And like I said, please like, subscribe, share, and uh, stay tuned for more builds. I've got some really cool ideas in my head that I've already started working on and hopefully new videos are soon to come. Thanks a lot. See you on the next one.